to my channel. So today we're going to look at how you can move to Germany without a blocked account or how to move to Germany without a blocked account. It's very common. It's a common thing that you need a blocked account, right? But in this video, we're going to show you how you can do this, how you can achieve this without having to present a blocked account. And I have somebody who have done that and she succeeded in doing that and she currently lives in Germany and when she went to Germany she was able to navigate her way and she's on the right track okay so guys if you're watching me for the first time I want to welcome you especially to my channel this is the Promise Brennan channel and we are changing lives if you haven't subscribed yet ensure that you click on the subscribe button and don't don't forget to click on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever we drop content we drop content every week and don't forget to smash the like button on this video to support this video all right so before i continue i want to put a disclaimer on this video that the content we share is for information papers okay it is not a professional advice from an immigration so this is not an immigration ensure that you make research regarding the content that we share here and we want you to know that information keep changing so ensure that you stay up to date with the current information okay so guys join me as i welcome our guest to the podium all the way from germany she lives in germany and she's going to be sharing with you how you can move to germany without a blocked account okay but before she share that i would like her to introduce herself and what she's currently doing in germany so over to you okay first of all thank you for having me on your channel you know it's such an honor to be here talking to your audience and hi to everyone i am Evelyn and i am a cameroonian based in germany i am currently an international student in a public university here in germany in nord rhine westfalen and i moved to germany on a social program it is called OPE. So I'm going to be talking to you in this video today about how you can move to Germany as an au pair without, you know, having to, you know, spend money on block account or whatsoever. Like he clearly said, the means of moving to Germany that I'm talking about right now entails you spending little to no amount of money. So yeah, I came as an au pair and I'll be telling you all about that. I'm currently a student where I came as an au pair and i'll be telling you all about that in a moment all right thank you so much for that great introduction okay um so what's your youtube channel name oh my youtube channel name is my name neveline mafor okay all right. okay um, I'm, go I'm going to be putting the link in the description so that you guys can go and subscribe to our channel okay i saw her channel and uh, she has amazing videos there that can help you all right, especially if you want to move to Germany. So ensure that you also subscribe there, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to welcome you again once again, okay? So right away, I'm going to be asking her just a few questions, okay? And uh, we'll be true, okay? So first of all, can you tell us about the OPE program? Yeah, so OPE is a cultural exchange program where by a young adult under the age of 27, so um, from 18 to about 26 years, moves from their home country, could be wherever in the world, Africa, Asia, or wherever, to come live with the German family here as an au pair. Like the family is called the host family and you are the au pair. So you come live and take care of German kids. So that's basically what au pair is all about. How is it spelled? So it's um, A-U-P-A-I-R. That's au pair oh. matron. It's normally called au pair matron, like the au pair girl, if oh, I should translate okay. it in English. And yeah, there are going to be links in the description box of this video on how you can, you know, match with the whole family. Every information about that, basically, I'm going to send you links you can put in the description box of this video. Okay, thank you so much. So they are applying from that link, right? Yeah. I'm going to make it um, in such a way that they can apply from that link because there's like a procedure where you have to, you know, connect with the host family first. And there is a portal where you look for this host family. And then you can go to the embassy level where you have to book your appointment, go for your interview and all of that. Okay. Do you, did you make any video on, I mean, explaining this process? I have a couple of videos. I have videos on what OPE is all about on my channel. I have a video 
to tell you how you can prepare for the interview i have like guidelines to becoming an op in germany on my video on my um channel so yeah you guys could also um head off to my channel to check it out for yourself if you want to come to uh, germany as an op because like i said it's one of the cheapest means as of now to come to germany you don't need a blocked account you might not even have to pay your flight tickets depending on the family that you meet all you need to do is to have yourself a passport connect with the host family online and then see where it takes you to if things work out with your host family you get all the papers and you submit them at the embassy you pay your embassy fee and then you can move to your host family like in a nutshell that's what the program is all about but i could um kind of break it down so that everyone knows what they are looking at um first of all the process is you start by um setting up a profile for yourself on opair.com or opair world and first of all i'm going to mention that people do use agents to do this like they use agencies that will do this for them to come over to germany but first of all the disclaimer is i did this all by myself i didn't use an agent i just like you know went on opair.com and i registered on this website uploaded pictures put my information that was required and then i started pairing with families until i got my host family we talked for about three months because at the time that was in 2020 there was corona so it was really difficult to get an appointment at the embassy so while we're waiting for an appointment i was in contact with these people who talk i'll get to know the kids like meet the kids online who talk and stuff like that and eventually I got an appointment, submitted all the paperwork they had sent to me, and I was able to move to Germany over to them. But now, in detail, the first thing is setting up an account for yourself on that website and selecting a couple of countries that you want to pair with people from. So my countries of option were Belgium, Germany, Austria, I think Switzerland as well, because you can do a pair in these countries, right? France, I think I had France. So when you set up a profile for yourself on this website, you have to determine what countries that you want to match with people from. It's more like a dating website. To anyone who has used a dating website, it's like, like you go set up a profile for yourself and you connect with people. It's the same thing. But the only difference is you're connecting here with families who want someone to come live and take care of their child. So um, what happens is you set up a profile for yourself there, choose the countries, and then you start matching up with people you chat with them a little bit see where it takes you if you're interested in a family then you can take it out of the platform like exchange contacts and you start talking privately on whatsapp or whatever and if things are working out well they are going to be sending you all the paperwork which i'm going to be listing that you need to go to the embassy and one of the papers that you would need would be an invitation letter from your host family. You need a work contract from your host family. Personally, I needed their ID cards, like their identification papers. My host mom and my host dad, I needed their ID identification papers. All of that you will need. And then they are going to get in your insurance. Like I said, this is completely free of charge. You don't even have to pay for your insurance on like when you're coming as a student. But with them, they, they pay your insurance and send a copy to you. All of this, you're going to collect the documents from them. I mean, you collect and book an appointment at the embassy where you're going to submit these papers and go for an interview. But on your part, the only thing which you really need for this embassy appointment is an E1 German language certificate. E1 is the easiest level to attain. Most people can attain that. So you need an A1 level of language to be able to apply for this visa. That's like one of the most important prerequisites for this uh, visa. And when you apply for the visa, I can't really say how long it's going to take you because mine took about three months and that was with the corona situation. But normally it should take from three to six weeks on average, maybe more. That's basically... So now the A1 level, how can they enroll in a class to take that exam? They can take it anywhere, right? You can take it anywhere in your home, your home country. Let's say you're in Nigeria, you're in Cameroon. You can just go register in a language school in your area. And then you decide to start taking your A1 certificate. Another option, um, your A1 language. And then eventually you can write the, the German 
exam another option i would recommend is since a1 is not very difficult if you have like financial constraints or something you can learn you can learn a1 by yourself like german a1 by yourself it's not that difficult i promise you german is not the easiest language but a1 is not that difficult you can use dolingo like this apps you can use dolingo you can use youtube you can watch german you know movies not necessarily like movies movies like kids movies read kids books like small because a1 is just like the bare minimum what they expect from you is the bare minimum i can coach someone to take an a1 exam by themselves without necessarily going for a formal language in a school or whatsoever i have done it for my b2 b1 and b2 so i know it's possible so um yeah that's necessarily what you need a1 and that this is how you can achieve it you just need to register in a language institution in your country register for the exam you can prepare by yourself or you prepare with an institution and then when the exam date approaches you go sit for the exam get a certificate and yeah you submit it for your appointment but you need the certificate in order to secure an appointment this is one of the big requirements that will be necessary when you are applying for this visa okay and you will take that a1 exam after you've been matched to a family in germany right i didn't get it so i will take this a1 exam after you have been matched with the family in germany after no. connected no my advice is before anyone connects with a family have that a1 certificate ready because when you connect with the family if you click let's say one month later they would, they would have prepared you all the documents maximum one month later they would have sent you even within weeks they're going to send you all the documents you need for the embassy so if you do not have your language it might be even difficult because you might connect and they realize that you don't have the language and they decide to disconnect and find another okay because it's going to take more time for them so my advice to you is get your a1 language certificate ready before you connect with the family because when you connect if it's some family that if it's someone who is serious they are just going to want you in like within the next 3 months okay and on average to get a e1 if you're going to a german language school to get your e1 takes 3 months of studies before you write exams you wait for 6 weeks or 2 months for your results to come back to you okay okay and this uh okay uh stuff DP, right? DP. Yeah, definitely. I was going to get to that. Of course, it's not like the it's not like a big sum of money. It's not like a huge amount of money, but of course, they pay you because when you move in, that was the next part I was going to come to, like after you get your visa and you move into Germany, what happens? When you move in and start living with your whole family, normally you get 280 euros as of now it's 280 euros monthly allowance we call it pocket allowance it's not really a salary plus 50 euros for your language support so we assume that as an au pair you're going to be learning the language and your host family is supporting you with 50 euros every month on 280 that they give you for pocket allowance they call it tashin girl here which means pocket allowance and um yeah you have to work for at least 30 hours in a week. So, it's either like 5 hours a day or 5 hours a day Monday to Saturday or 6 hours a week from Monday to Friday. So, it depends on your host family. You guys discuss that together whether they want you to work on Saturday. If they need you to work on Saturday, then you have to work 5 hours every day. If they don't need you on Saturday, you work 6 hours every day. Okay, so this au pair is it only open to uh, females or is it also open to males? It's very shocking because guys can do this as as well, but I just feel like most people think that taking care of babies is like a ladies thing to do. So it's mostly girls who have always applied for the program. A few guys do it, but I see that most men don't really like most young men don't go for that. They are just like oh taking care of babies is for the girls. So, but it's open for boys and for girls. How long is the program? 
12 months oh sorry i didn't mention the, the program lasts 12 months and your visa cannot be extended it's a cultural exchange program that lasts only 12 months after 12 months you either go back to your home country or you go ahead and do something else in germany with your life okay so it's so possible it's, to, it's possible to change your visa in germany to something else yes okay. if you come as an au pair it's possible to change to some something else i changed two visas i came as an au pair I changed to another social program, which is FSJ. They call it FSJ. It's basically volunteering in Germany. And then I changed to the university where I am right now. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So, what about the embassy appointment uh, issue? Like, what is the fastest way to get that appointment? Things have changed as from when I came. Because now there's this whole thing of category A, category whatever, whatever, whatever. When I came to Germany, there was no such thing as category. But category A falls like um, student visas and all of those things fall under category A, which means that most of these social programs come later in category B and all of that. But still, it's still um, relatively, it's still relatively easy to get au pair visas depending on what country you're applying from. But I wouldn't say it's easy for Cameroon, my country, right now because it's not even easy to like get. An appointment from the embassy sometimes the embassy is even closed you can't explain why it's not open so it, it's not the easiest thing from my country but on average now we're talking based on when i came it took me about um i secured my appointment for the embassy within the shortest period of time but this is different because i moved from a european country to germany as an au pair i was already in europe i was in romania so from romania I applied and I had to wait for about two weeks because of Corona. I got an appointment at the embassy and then I went for my interview. But after my interview, it took so long. It took three months exactly. I don't know if it was a Corona situation or what, but it took really long. But then I got the visa and I came here. So on average, if things work out right, it should take you for Cameroon right now, it should take you about 10 months. To get an appointment for an au pair visa, 10 months to one year plus. Mm -hmm. To get an appointment for an au pair visa. And then after you go for your interview, it might take you about six weeks or more for the visa to be granted. Or for the visa result. Accepted, okay. rejected, it takes like six weeks later. And uh, what, what do you say about the visa acceptance rate? Is it high? Or? Prior to now, it was absolutely high. But at this point in time, not everyone who applies for an au pair visa gets it. I've seen so many host families who are trying to get au pairs from Africa and their visas have been rejected. So right now, it's not like um, things have changed. It used to be the easiest and the cheapest. But right now, it's still the easiest and the cheapest. It's just that it depends on where you're applying from. I would say, yeah. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for sharing this information. I have not shared this kind of information with my child before, and I'm glad to bring something new to my viewers so that they can find another alternative way to, to move, especially those who want to move to Germany and have been scared about this bank statement stuff, or I mean, bank and uh, blocked accounts. So you have an opportunity now that you can do or try without presenting blocked account, which is very, very good. Okay, I would really advise you to plan towards this. And who knows? Maybe by this time next day, you can jump and you thank me later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So thank exactly. you so much, Beverly. I'm um, really, um, I'm really, I'm, I'm really excited and happy to have you on my channel. And please, guys, she has a YouTube channel and she's doing well. You know, she's still growing, and I would like you. I would like to patronize her. I would like to go there and subscribe in bulk. Please show her exactly. love by subscribing. Subscribe, yes, guys. subscribe, subscribe. Watch and her videos. A lot, Click on the like button. There's a lot of details. Okay. On au pair. Like moving to Germany as an au pair, we have a lot of details on that on my channel. So if au pair is something that's interesting to you, just head, up, uh, head over to my channel and check it out for yourself. Oh, nice. And um, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And okay, okay, guys, so, so don't forget to subscribe to this channel. 
and click on the bell okay so that you will notify whenever we drop content we drop content every week and also don't forget to like like this video and don't forget to share this video with your friends and your loved ones and as many people as you can okay all right um if you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one, the link is in the description under this video just go there and click on the link to the native food and after you've done the native food please contact me on either instagram or facebook okay the links are in the description under this video then we'll plan also the link to what she shared about the their website will be in the description you'll find it here and if you need more information please go on our channel before you watch those videos subscribe okay guys thank you so much for watching till i come away again have a great time see you in my next video